When it comes to the world of mini computers, Apple has always been at the forefront with the likes of the Mac Mini and even though Intel introduced their first mini computer back in 2012, in terms of performance, value for money, they've always lagged behind up until a few years ago when different companies started manufacturing Macs that can compete with the best of the best like this one, which is the world's first mini PC to be powered by Intel's 13th generation Core i9. Buckle up and let's go for the ride. First things first, let's do the unboxing. Lifting the box lid open, we are first met with this tiny PC wrapped in nylon paper and to show you how tiny it is, it comfortably fits on my palm. Going a little bit deeper, you'll get the thank you note and further down, the power rig, instruction manual, a mounting plate and a bag of screws but more on those a little later in the video. Lifting it up, it's a bit on the chunkier side and given that it dishes at 120 watts, I don't think it needs a power brick this size. Comparing it to the Mac Mini which comes with a built-in power supply of 150 watts, they should have borrowed a leaf so that the only thing you'd need is this power extension cord. It also comes with a HDMI cable which you can use to connect your monitor. This bag of screws and this mounting plate would be a bit of a head scratcher but fear not, I'm gonna fill in. So since this mini PC is expandable, using this bag of screws, you can mount the NVMe M.2 SSD sticks to their dedicated slots. Then if you decide to mount your mini PC at the back of your computer, underneath the desk, that's where this plate comes in and you can use the same bunch of screws. As for the design, the chassis is predominantly made out of plastic with vents on three of the sides to help with some heat dissipation, then the rubber feet at the bottom to ensure it stays wherever you place it. With the unboxing and design out of the way, let's get into what you guys would be keen to know about this mini PC, the specs and the I.O. It comes with an Intel Core i9 processor with 14 cores and 20 threads which can boost up to 5.4 GHz. Then in the RAM department, it packs 32 gigs of RAM which works in tandem with the 2TB of storage and with Wi-Fi 6E coupled with Bluetooth 5.2, you'd be getting the most out of this tiny machine and that's not all. The Intel Iris Xe graphics with 96 execution units also offers improved performance. Now, given that the specs I'm mentioning are for the best model which costs for 1,399 Australian dollars, the equivalent of 900 USDs, you'll be getting the most bang for your buck compared to something like the M2 Mac Mini which by just upgrading the storage to 2TB and RAM to 24GB will just be $200 off the price of 2 Geekcom Mini IT13s which if you'd ask me, isn't worth it at all. When it comes to I.O., the tiny form factor doesn't limit it and despite being smaller than my M1 Mac Mini, at the front you've got two USB-A 3.2 ports along with the headphone jack and power button. At the back there are two USB-C 4.0 ports which can support 8K monitors thanks to the 40GB of bandwidth they are able to transfer. Underneath the two USB-C ports you get another two HDMI 2.0 ports which technically gives you the ability to run up to four monitors with just this machine. In addition to the Wi-Fi 6E I mentioned not too long ago, you also get a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port and two USB app ports next to it, one of which is 3.2. On the side we've got an SD slot which is a really good addition given that most mini computers and even some laptops don't come with it. Having talked about its expandability, let's get into the nuts and bolts to explore the different expansion options. Using a Phillips head screwdriver, unscrew the captive screws in the rubber feet then put it to the side. Starting with the RAM, we've got a 32GB DDR4 RAM stick from Lexa and even though I hoped for DDR5 for the faster speeds, the DDR4 will work for now before I upgrade to DDR5. As for storage, the 2TB SSD storage we talked about earlier comes in the form of this M.2 SSD stick from Lexa. Then, Next to it, another M.2 slot which I'll definitely be populating and finally attached to this ribbon cable is another 2.5 inch SSD slot which I'll be filling up as well. A lot of food for thought. Now to give it even more context, for less than $650, you can add an extra 4TB of SSD storage and switch to a 32GB DDR5 RAM stick which in comparison to upgrading your RAM to 16 gigs and SSD storage to 1TB on an M2 Mac Mini would cost you 900 Australian dollars. Opening up the top, we've got the fun but we won't be getting deeper than that cause that's another video in itself. 
With the mechanical bit out of the way, it's now time to boot it up and since I want to use the same set of peripherals and one monitor, this KVM switch from New Green comes into the picture. After about an hour of setting everything up, it was good to go and it comes pre-installed with Windows 11. Now with just a press of a button, I'm able to switch to either Mac or Windows thanks to the picture by picture mode that comes with the Samsung Odyssey Neo G9. With everything up and running, it was now time to test the performance and it definitely holds up thanks to the 32 gigs of RAM and the i9 processor. I had multiple windows open, Premiere Pro and even Lightroom and it didn't seem to struggle. As you can see, it's quite snappy scrolling through the different windows and executing commands, although one area I noticed some strife was when it came to exporting the complete edit. The Mac Mini on the other hand exported a lot faster. As for the video performance, it handled 4K footage well without dropping any frames and the same applied to watching videos on YouTube at the highest possible resolution. Getting into some benchmarks, the internal 2TB Lexus storage has ok speeds but being PCIe 4.0, they could be better with the potential of reaching 7000 read and write speeds which explains why I will be definitely upgrading to better M.2 NVMe SSD drives. Now don't get me wrong, those speeds are perfectly fine and quite the overkill for the average consumer but being a techie, I just want to try and see the most I can get out of those SSDs. I also tried single core and multi core benchmarks on Geekbench and even though it packs a punch, it can be better. In saying that, it's understandable given that it comes with DDR4 RAM and upgrading to DDR5 would create significant daylight when it comes to the power. Speaking of power, an area that is somewhat out west of it is the power brick. Even though it comes with a 120 watt charging block, it only uses a measly 35 watts. Speaking of which, the lower power limit and DDR4 RAM effect trickles down to the Iris XE graphics card performance and that is clearly evident on power hungry games. Jumping on to Cinebench, I ran the single and multi core test and as you can see, this machine is no scrub but once again, the power limit and DDR4 RAM pulls it down a bit but the good thing is they are upgradable so you are not completely handicapped. Throw in a DDR5 RAM and it turns into a completely different ball game. When it comes to gaming, this mini PC is not designed for gaming but I tried Valorant and the frame rates were decent but I noticed a few skip frames here and there and that's because the Intel Iris XE graphics card handicaps it when it comes to power hungry games but the good thing is you can always upgrade to something better. As for the price, it will set you back 1399 Australian dollars which is the equivalent of 900 USDs and the best part is the base model comes with 2TB of storage and 32 gigs of RAM. Compared to a base model M2 Mac Mini with an 8 core CPU and 256 gigs of SSD storage, like mentioned earlier, the best model will set you back 999 Australian dollars and if you decide to spec it up to 24 gigs of RAM and a 2TB SSD, you'll be looking at 2799 Australian dollars which is nearly the price of 2 Geekum IT13s as mentioned earlier. In addition to that, the IT13 is upgradable and you can add as much storage as you want depending on how deep your pockets are, not to mention the RAM which can also be spec to the highest possible unit. With the Mac Mini on the other hand, whatever you spec it to before clicking on buy is set in stone and if you choose to upgrade, you have to take it back to Apple and this would cost you even more. With the bare bones of this mini PC laid out, the big question remains, is it worth it? And my answer to that is a definitive yes and for few good reasons. Most important of all, the spec sheet that comes for an unbeatable price and as if that's not enough, the ability to spec it up for even more reasonable prices. As for the different use cases, the average consumer won't have any problems populating Excel sheets, typing up Word documents, browsing the internet as well as the occasional media consumption on platforms like YouTube and Netflix. For the content creators out there, it would do just fine. Whether you're editing your photos in Lightroom or videos on Premiere Pro, you'll be having a field day. But expect a slight struggle on graphic intensive tasks like exports as well as graphic intense timelines. When it comes to gaming, it's decent but the integrated graphics card creates a bottleneck as it struggles to handle graphic intense games which results in skip frames and games running at low frame rates. In conclusion, being the world's first Core i9 mini PC with a 1300H processor, it definitely punches above its weight and the value for money is so worth it. There you have it peeps, hope you enjoyed and find this video helpful and as always, don't forget to like, subscribe, 
share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see another review of a mini computer I'm currently using, check out this video. Till then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.